Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Murray with Alpha Star Academy and today we're going to be discussing the problem It's Moon Time. And in this problem we are given a very long string with potentially one corrupted character whose value has changed. And our goal is to determine how many strings of the form i, j, j could occur at least f times in the uncorrupted string. So i, j, j here just represents a string formed by a character followed by two of the same character that are different from the first character. Now this problem statement is kind of hard to understand, so let's work through an example to better understand the problem. Here we're given two values, n, the size of the string, and the value f. So we're looking for strings of the form i, j, j that could occur at least f times. And here is our corrupted string, foo, mu. I claim that both foo and mu could occur twice in the uncorrupted string. How could that happen? If this m was corrupted and was originally an f, we can see we get foo foo twice. Likewise, if this f was corrupted and became was originally an m, we get mu mu twice. So here our output would be two foo mu. There are two steps in solving this problem. The first step is we need to work out how to count all strings of the form i, j, j for each potential pair of letters. The second step is to work out how the, un uh, the unknown corrupted character can change these counts. Since step one is a simple brute force algorithm, we're going to take a look at that algorithm together first before trying to move on to step two. This is a good problem solving strategy when you're faced with a particularly challenging U-scope problem. Try to peel off the easy part and do that first. So let's take a look here. We're going to start off by reading in the input. This consists of n, the length of the string, f, the count we're trying to reach, and the string itself, which I'm going to call s. Once we've done that, we're going to create an array called output to store all of the successful strings that we find throughout this process. Now, to count these substrings of the form i, j, j, we're going to want to brute force over every pair of letters in the alphabet. And there's lots of different ways to do this. I selected this way. It's not the prettiest way, but it is one of the most readable ways. So I'm just going to loop over I over every single letter in the alphabet, and I'm going to loop J over every single letter in the alphabet. Of course, the better solution here is to use the ASCII table, um, but this is very readable, and that's what I'm trying to maximize for here. However, there is the constraint that I and J have to be different. So we're going to first check if i and j are equal, we're going to continue on to the next loop. That's not a valid pair of letters. Once we've done this, we can begin counting how often i, j, j occurs in our string. So let's declare a count in order to do that. And we're going to want to begin looping over all of the positions in our string. We're going to leave off the last two positions because we know that the substring we're looking for has a length of three. So it can't possibly start at the last two positions. There's not enough room for it. Once we've declared this for loop inside it, we want to check for each position k is the first character i and are the next two characters both j. If this is true, then we have found the substring i, j, j, and we should increase our count by one. If at the end of this loop, we see that the count is at least f, we have found at least f copies of the substring i, j, j, so we should add the substring i, j, j to our output. And this is just collecting all of the successful substrings that we find throughout the process. Then at the very end of our code, we can print out the number of successful substrings we found. That's just the length or size of the output. And then we're just going to print out every single string on its own line. And this completes step one. 
Step two is a little bit more challenging and requires some analysis. So this is when we want to break out our pencil and paper and start writing down some test cases to work through. Suppose we're looking for the strings x, y, y. If we encounter any string with two of those three letters, we can transform the third one into the correct letter. So let's take a look at that. Here we have the string a, 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 Y, Y. So you can see we've got two Ys, and we can transform this first A into an X, producing a copy of the substring X, Y, Y. Here we have a similar pattern. Instead of having both Ys, we have the first X and the second Y, and we can transform this A into the first Y to get the substring x, y, y. And then here we have the first x, the first y, and we can transform this a into the second y to once again produce that substring x, y, y. Thus, in general, if there appears any string of the form sort of random character y, y, or x random character y, or xy random character, we should be able to increase the count of our xyy by one. However, there is a small edge case, and we've got to be very careful here. Let's scroll down here and take a look at some of these other examples. Here, we have a similar pattern where we've got two of the three correct letters. So we can see we have x, y, x. This y is incorrect, or this x is incorrect. It wants to be a y. But when I transform that x into a y to produce the substring x, y, y, I accidentally delete an x, y, y that was already present in my string. And we can see the same thing can occur here. I have x, x, y. I want to transform that x into a y to produce x, y, y. But when I do that, I create a copy of x, y, y here, and I delete a copy of x, y, y here. And here's a third example as well. So our key takeaway here is that if there's a copy of x, y, y in any of the three previous positions, so the current position, the position right before, and the position right before that, then swapping a letter doesn't actually help us. Help us. It produces a new copy of x, x, y, y, but it deletes an old copy of x, y, y. So we don't actually get any benefit. So when we're counting and trying to check, do we benefit from this bonus string, um, we should always be wary that there cannot be a copy of x, y, y within the last three positions. So with that in mind, we're going to try to amend our code here to include this bonus count. So this potential to create a singular extra copy of the string x, y, y, or in the case of our code, i, j, j. So because we can only ever create at most one extra string from this corrupted character, right? Only one character has been corrupted, so we can only create one extra copy of the string. We should only bother searching for the corrupted character or this bonus uh, string if the count is precisely equal to f minus 1. If the count is smaller than f minus 1, the bonus string is not going to help us. If, f is, if the count is already at least f, then the bonus string is irrelevant. We already know we have enough of the current string. So we should only search for the bonus if count is exactly equal to f minus 1. Before continuing on, let's make a couple small changes to our earlier code just to make implementation a little easier for ourselves. So the first thing I want to change 
is I want to pad the input string by adding two blank characters to the beginning and two blank characters at the end. So this is going to allow me to ignore boundary conditions because I'm going to be wanting to look at substrings, both two characters before my current position and two characters after my current position. So this is just going to make the implementation slightly easier. And then to make this work, I have to change my loop on line 12 here so that k loops from 2 to n instead of from 0 to n minus 2. That's simply because I've shifted everything over by two spaces. And now I'm ready to try to look for these bonus opportunities. So I'm going to start a counter k at 2, and then I'm going to initialize a while loop to loop over the string. The benefit of using a while loop here in Python uh, is that I'm, I can change this counter by different amounts depending on what I find. In particular, if I ever find a copy of the string, I'm going to increase k by 3 to jump forward three spaces so that I never am near a copy of the substring, right? One thing that we wanted to avoid here was replacing a character in an already present copy of the substring. So if I ever find a copy of the substring, I'm going to increase my counter by three to jump away into the future, avoiding replacing anything in that substring. So let's do that first. So this condition, matches exactly the condition I had before. We're going to check, is the first character i? Are the next two characters j? If so, I'm going to increase k by 3. So this is going to jump my process forward three spaces and make sure that on the next step, I'm never looking at a position near a completed copy of the current substring I'm looking for. Once I have already skipped ahead, so if I haven't found any copy of XYY or I, I, or IJJ nearby, I'm going to increase my count if two of the three letters match. So this would be the two letters before match. So I have an IJ, then I'd have to make SK a j, and I'd be able to increase my count. If the letter right before matches and the letter right after matches, so this would be akin to x question mark y, right? some unknown value in the middle that I can transform into a y to produce the correct substring, then I'll increase my count. And the third case is if the two letters after are correct. So this would be something like this form, where I have an unknown character and then two copies of the correct letter right after that. So I'd have to transform this into an x to produce the substring x, y, y. So if both of these are the same, I'll also increase my count. Each of these conditions just check do I have two of the three correct letters in, a, in the sort of adjacent positions? If I do, I have found my bonus opportunity, and I can increase my count to f. And when my count becomes f, I will break out of my loop, and I will have success. However, if I didn't find a bonus opportunity, then I need to increase k by 1 so that I can look at the next position and determine, is there a bonus opportunity there? Then I'll look at the next position and say, is there a bonus opportunity here? And I'm just going to keep searching until I run out of all of the positions. If I find the bonus opportunity, my count will be f, and I'll add the output to my list of outputs. If I never find the bonus opportunity, my count will remain f minus 1, and I will not add the substring to my list of outputs. So this completes the code. Let's save it and then submit it to the grading server to see if it's correct. So we're going to scroll down here past everything. Let's zoom out a little bit. 
and we're going to submit. And we should see that everything goes green. Note that in this problem, Python it may be at a small disadvantage. Passing the last set of task, test cases, test cases 9 through 13, can be challenging in Python even when you have sort of similar runtime algorithms uh, to, to this. So you have to be very careful and optimize your code. Um, in C++ and Java, it's much easier to pass all the test cases. Normally, this doesn't occur in bronze, um, but other people may have had a different experience than me. So if you have a really nice Python solution or a nice solution in any other language, feel free to share it below. And we would love to see what you guys came up with. So thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time.